Ms. Spruill, you are furious that you had to file a paternity case against the defendant, Mr. Dixon, due to his denial of your daughter, Skaya. You say you know the exact night you conceived and he is her father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Dixon, you claim that your relationship with Ms. Spruill was purely sexual and one conversation that occurred is the only proof you need that her child is not yours. Is yes, that correct? Sir. So, Ms. Spruill, why is he denying paternity? Uh, he flip-flops. One day, this is his daughter. The next day, it isn't, and I'm tired. I'm irritated. It's to the point that it shouldn't be called for. If this is going to be your baby, be your baby 24-7. Don't go back and forth. So, he's going back and forth? Yes, Your Honor. One minute she is, one minute she isn't. Is that true, Mr. Dixon? No, it's not, Your Honor. Um, I don't claim this child is mine because I have serious doubts about this child. It's been multiple you just came to saw her last say, week. Like I said, most of the cases. You just came to Did you go see the baby last week? You just came to saw her last week. Played with her, mm. spent the night with her, and all. Well, you know, I wanted to go check on her because. Why would you check on a child that's not yours? Well, y'all, look here. Let me explain this, y'all. Can uh, first, I want to start off about my doubts about this child. Uh, would you like me stepping to the board and explain this diagram to you? You brought an exhibit. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. let, let, let me see. Go ahead. Let me brought this down. Well, as you can see, I have a family that works at a store. On this particular day, my family member wanted to present Sky around. So one day she went to work and was like, she was like, hey, we're so excited about our newest family member, Sky. So she goes around showing pictures and, you know, excited about it, showing to our coworkers, her bosses and everything. So for one particular coworker comes out of the blue and was like, whoa, wait a minute, pause. No, that's not, that's not his baby, that's my brother's baby. Like, whoa, wait a minute. Why would this girl come out of the blue and claim that this is her brother's baby just like this? So I have my doubts that this is my child. The co-worker says, that's my brother's baby. And comes out nowhere and says, this is my brother's child. Lie. And then, too, Your Honor, I want to say this, too. Um, I have doubts that this is my child. Why? Because Kamaya constantly lies. Oh, wow. She even lies about this baby. It was a time when she was pregnant. She said, I slipped and fell in the tub. Your you sister texting me, you took text me to the me hospital. Saying, you text me saying you're in the ER the whole entire time, but once I'm on the phone, His you're in the living room. His sister took me to the hospital. Giggling, laughing, playing His with sister. your son. And as far as the co-worker telling his family member, that same co-worker got on the phone with me and his family member and let it be known his family member was mistaken. He wasn't even around. The other male let it be known he's lying. So when I sent Mr. Dixon the screenshots of these young men letting me know we never had any, any relations at all, the problem just diminished. Kamaya has two phones. She had one phone that she used to be on the internet and she posts her whole entire life on Facebook. She has Straight another up. phone where she texts and calls. She no, plays like she's two I people on Facebook. He has that she number. He's this not allowed to have my main number. We have no communication. Because like I said, he's, he's not gonna... allowed to have your no. main number and he's no. the father oh, no, of no. your child? We're going to go to why he can't have my main number. Mr. Dixon ran off to Alabama when his daughter was one, one month old, to say he was working. He wasn't working. He was not working. You, you want to know to how? You want to get a better job. Oh, no, no. To make more money. Our but daughter... But it's lies our coming daughter, from her. One at a time. Our daughter, it wasn't even seven months. Mr. Dixon had a whole nother child. Why he was still with me. He was still with me. So what was he doing in Alabama? Not Making one... babies. <laughs> yeah, he was going in some work. He put in a lot of work. <laughs> Mr. Dick. And, oh, not only that, once he gets down to Alabama, my daughter was all over his Facebook. Cover photo and all. The same child you've been denying. But wait, a, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's down in Alabama making babies, but he's using your child's photo. Oh, yeah, she was all on his Facebook until the baby mama found out. Then my daughter just disappeared. First of all, no Your pictures, Honor, no them nothing. Them pictures were not on there when I moved to Alabama. Them pictures I, was up there before Your Honor, I moved I have to Alabama. Evidence. Ms. Brule, you have evidence. Yes, I do. I'd like to yes. see it. Jerome, Sorry. thank you. You say he accepted the baby at first, and this is your evidence to prove it. So this is his page. And, and that is got... my baby girl. That is Skya. And he had other pictures of Skya on so, there as well. And you claim he's accepting her. He's made her He was picture. telling her he was so happy. You're saying that when she was born, he was claiming her. He yeah. was saying, my baby girl is in the world. He was there my entire pregnancy. He was. He is the one who told me I was pregnant. He said I was pregnant because he's throwing up everywhere. He said I was pregnant. 
Because he was throwing up. He was throwing up. Your Honor, let me tell you about that, Your Honor, about that. <laughs> I had a hangover. We got drunk one night, and I had a hangover, and I threw up at 5, 6 o'clock that morning. So why did you That's call me to find you out when I was pregnant? That's how you sick, it's just a hangover. Why did you come Weeks later, she's the one throwing up like she was sick. I said, no, maybe you should go No, did Mr. Dixon tell you he was counting my ready. symptoms? He had been counting my symptoms before I even knew I was pregnant. So what you're saying is he was having morning sickness. Yep. He was having <laughs> pregnancy-like symptoms. Yep. All he wanted to do was sleep, eat, sleep, eat. So I must be pregnant. No, I was. <laughs> I was. Since I'm sleeping and eating, I must so be pregnant. So we go to the doctor. We were actually going to find out about my friend being pregnant. I took a test with her. Mine came back negative. They tell me to come back in two weeks. We come back in two weeks together, and guess what? You're five weeks, three days pregnant. Mr. Dixon was there. We sat in the parking lot afterward, and I asked Mr. Dixon, what do you want to do? He tells me, we're going to be all right. We're going to take care of this baby. Everything going to be fine. Two weeks later, you, we let his mother know that I was pregnant. She pretends to be happy-go-lucky about it, but Thanksgiving, all hell breaks loose. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. I want to know what happened on Thanksgiving. Oh, everybody found out that I was pregnant. He, everybody knew I was pregnant by then. Because at first, they were saying I was lying about being pregnant because Mr. Dixon kept telling them I wasn't. Even though he went to the All she do is lie. You don't know what to you believe. You went with me! How did I lie? You, you went with me. So did you go with me to the appointment? Did I you? Went. Was you there when they said I was pregnant? No, I wasn't there when they Oh, you wasn't came there? Back with the results. Oh, and didn't they tell you to come to the back? So we didn't go to the back to talk to that nice I lady. I was never there. You wasn't I was at there. The, house the whole time. You... All right. So Thanksgiving, the they life. found out you were pregnant. Yes, and after that, I became the devil. This wasn't his baby. This, that, and the third. You're so sure this is my child, but yet I'm not on the birth certificate. You weren't See, there when she was born. What you mean? Excuse, but yet you we wasn't kept talking there. about me putting myself on the uh, birth certificate, and I even came up with money to change her last name. But you kept pushing it off. But you're so sure this is my child. Why is you instead of pushing it off? Because you don't do And I'm anything coming up with her. money to privilege. change her name to my name. So when he came up with the money to change her last name, why not do it? Because when she was born, he can, first of all, he wasn't there when she was born. He came two days later since he want to play them games. If I'm going to keep doing everything for this child, that's my name. That's you didn't lie. earn that, right? That's a lie. I don't you don't, know. you didn't well, earn that, right? Well, Miss, no. well, Miss no. Brule, but now that's, that, that's, but that's not the issue. If you're saying this is the father of, of, of my child, a without a doubt, and he's saying, I want to put my name on the birth certificate and have her name changed to my last name. Wouldn't that be so what you want? Me. I mean, you were screaming at the top yes. of your I... lungs yes. in this courtroom to get him to acknowledge this child. You are offended because you say he, he acknowledges her one day and not the next. A name change is a significant acknowledgement as well as being willing to execute the birth certificate, why not be cooperative instead of combative? Because the day we were supposed to go get a change, Mr. Dixon ran right back off to <laughs> Alabama. Lies. Oh, we you did? Of time. I didn't leave. You were there, there for a Alabama. week. You was there the first week of her life, Mr. Dixon. I didn't leave back to Alabama until a month later. We had plenty of time to change his name. I don't talk to a so, company every day. Let's go get this baby name changed. I got the money. Lies, Let's go. Lies, Let's go. Lies, no, it's his excuse. Lies. It's Put it to you like this, Your Honor. When me and Mr. Dixon are on good terms, he's daddy of the year. Me and him fall out, Skya doesn't exist. And that's what infuriates me more than anything. I don't care how you feel about me. That baby didn't deserve well, that. Why? why do you My lie? baby did not deserve that. I don't care how you feel about me. That is a child. I know what it feel like to grow up without your daddy. It's not a good feeling. And to have somebody come in and out of your life, it's not fair. If you're going to be our daddy, be our daddy 24-7. Don't pick and choose your days. Look at that beautiful little girl. She don't deserve that. You, you shouldn't run in and out of no child's life. Are you running in and out, Mr. Dixon? No, be I'm honest. not. No, I'm not. Are you, are, are you accepting the child on one day and then denying her the next? No, I'm not. But my dad started playing play when Kamaya constantly lies. Why do you lie? <laughs> Even when no, his baby was born, what, when was even when his baby was born, let, let she testify. lied. She even lied on the baby. First, okay, it started when you fell asleep and fell in the tub. You at the ER. You text me the whole time you at the ER, but yet you in the living room and get laughing and giggling with your son and everybody else. Like Why I do that? Then come to a point 
when you instead of saying this baby got blood transfers, blood transfers, blood transfers, four or five blood transfers, My baby has the baby a, got a brain problem. problem, the baby got a hole in the heart. Dang, this baby got this much problem and she just vehicle. got here. It's called vehicular heart defect. This baby instead of, got here. Why are you still lying on this child like this? The that, thing is, you crazy. would never come to the hospital, so how do you know I was lying? And this is another reason why I know she's lying, Your Honor. Wait, she wait, wait. She posts everything on Facebook. She's posted her whole life on Facebook. A life, a Facebook is like a diary to her. If that baby was in the hospital, she would post 20 or 50 doggone pictures and guess what, on that, Facebook. But you want to know something But she didn't else? post not one Your picture. Honor. Okay, she wait. She not post not nothing. So you, really? why do you believe she would lie and say her child was suffering from a medical challenge? I don't know. Maybe she's trying to get my Your attention. Honor. Okay. How can you watch your child grow up through Facebook for an entire year? But you can't pick up the phone and call her. You have another dude on Facebook that oh, you made a video of kissing upset. and praying to her. Okay, what, one at a time. After around Wait. September 2015, I got into a relationship with somebody because Mr. Dixon was no longer in the picture. I got into a relationship with somebody who accepted both of my children, who paid for Skye's daycare, been in multiple who bought diapers. Keep going to different guys trying to get money from guys. That's all she doing. She using people. Wow. That's all. Even an example. Says one day with on two her jobs birthday, unemployed. One day on birthday, I came and got her from work. I come what to get part? out of my phone. What hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, you, hey, listen, 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 listen. Woo. What car? Woo, child. Bring it down just a little bit. Because I want to understand this story. I'm At some point, you went and you it, got into a relationship with someone else. Yes, I else. did. We got into a relationship, and he was actually helping me with both of my children, not just one. So I, I feel like... And, and what, what is the issue with that? He was mad because me and him were... Um, I made a video of him and Skya. They were in the bed. They were laughing and playing. Oh, okay. I don't know what to believe, y'all, because mm -hmm. all she do is lie. I don't know what to believe. <laughs> One minute, you saying this baby's sick, this and that third, but she's not. Then, when she really is sick, then that's when you get pissed at me because I, know the night I don't know if it is true honor. or not. I know the exact night she was conceived because somebody wanted to make up for their little mishaps. And it was also Sweet as Day Weekend. I had to explain. That's he something had I never heard of. It. She brought that up. But he didn't even know it's an actual holiday. I it's think like that's just a Chicago thing. Okay, okay tell me what. No, no, I'm from Detroit. We do Sweetest oh. Day, too. I know well, what Sweetest Day is. Well, I'm from the South. We don't do it. Listen, no, we understand. Look, I've, I've been all over this country. Yes, I know I'm... only only certain parts of the country, the okay. Northwest, we do Sweetest Day. I get that. So the bottom line is, is you're saying she was conceived Sweetest Day weekend. Mm-hmm. Okay. But how do you know that for sure we, we got drunk that day? I mean, she bought liquor. Because that was everything. the first time. You well, you can make babies when you're, you're drunk. Oh, no, no. But she knows it, though. He She's said so his sure sperm that she count knows. was too low. His sperm count was supposed to be too low to make a baby. Paul's wrong. Okay, okay, people. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> um, hmm. You all are a lot. <laughs> this is a lot. It's a big mess. I mean, ooh. This is like, whoa. Okay. I want to get this. I'm really trying to understand the story. When you say you aren't sure, Mr. Dixon, I believe you. Like, I can see that it comes from an earnest place. But I am confused, and I understand Ms. Spruill's point, where there's so much evidence indicating that you accepted her. Right. Then... When you told me when we first met, I couldn't get pregnant. Uh, Parrish, my five-year-old son, he was a miracle baby. He I wasn't even supposed to have him. What? Then you said for a whole five years he's been on this earth, you never got pregnant. By I nobody? Know. Until me? Until you I made me, then all of a sudden, oh, I'm Harris pregnant. Harris is five, and then there's, there's Skya. They're like five years apart, so, so obviously... So, Miss, Miss Spruill, was Mr. Dixon the only man you were dating? Yes. When we got together, yes. At first, it was strictly sex. That's what we were doing. Having lots of sex, drinking lots of liquor. Gonna be honest about it. That's what we were doing. And it progressed into a relationship where he was, he was spending night, about it. he was moving in, he moved in with me, and I lived with him. So, I'm confused. If you really feel like this wasn't your baby, when I first told you I was pregnant, you could have stayed gone then. Mr. Dixon, I want to understand your doubt. You're saying you, you don't trust her. You feel like she's lying all the time. All the time. You also feel like this conversation that the family member had with the co-worker where the co-worker said, that's my brother's baby. Out of the Do blue. you know who this brother is? I don't know. I don't know. You don't her, know, but no. that when they showed the picture, they said, that's my brother's baby. Right. And then the last part of your doubt is centered around the fact that she's trying to say that this is another miracle baby when it's with you. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Yeah. What is your hope in this moment? The truth to come out. You just want the truth. I just want the truth. I have that answer for you. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Spruill versus Dixon, when it comes to 13-month-old Skya Spruill, 
It has been determined by this court. Mr. Dixon, you are the father. Thank you. You are her father. Thank you. You feel relieved, Miss Brule? <laughs> I do. How do you feel, Mr. Dixon? I'm excited. I have a beautiful, little ba beautiful baby girl. I'm gonna be the best father I can, and I'm just glad the truth is out. That's what I wanted to hear. At this point, what we have to do is figure out how to move forward. I'm hoping, Miss Brule, you will start letting the past be the past on this. You have literally, when I say literally, shout it. <laughs> the top of your lungs, how desperately. No, and I'm not saying it to be funny, I'm saying it truthfully because I knew it came from a place of pain. Ms. Kelso, you are in court today to prove that Mr. Davis is the father of your nine-month-old baby, Connor Kelso. Yes, Your Honor. You claim Mr. Davis has done nothing for your son, so you're suing for half the child-rearing expenses in the sum of $2,561. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, you say Ms. Kelso was in a relationship with another man, Mr. Hafner, during the window of conception. Yes, so, you are 100% certain that you are not Connor's father, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Kelso, you were in a relationship with another man, so why are you suing Mr. Davis? Because our conception date aligns with the date that I was sexually active with Mr. Davis. All right, please explain further. You all were in a relationship. For about four years, on and off, whenever we weren't with somebody else, we were having sex with each other, and Mr. Davis and I had sexual intercourse while I was dating Mr. Hafner, even though he was out of town at the time. So you were with another man, and then you saw Mr. Davis during that time? Yes, Your Honor. So you did sleep with Mr. Davis during the window of conception? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Davis, do you remember having sexual intercourse without using protection with Ms. Kelso? Yes, Your Honor. And you admit that it was during the window of conception? I'm not sure when the window of conception is. That's, that's based off of what she's told me. Ms. Kelso, do you have any evidence that would prove yes, the time I do, frame? This is... This is the window of conception between the 5th and the 11th. Mr. Davis and I had sexual intercourse on the 7th, while me and Mr. Hafner had sexual intercourse on the 15th. Okay. When we arrived back in town. All right, so there is a window of conception between January 5th and January 11th. And then you were intimate with Mr. Davis on the 7th, which is in purple. Yes, Your Honor. And then Connor was born October 18th. Yes, he was a week so, late. So, Mr. Davis, does this look familiar? Were you with Miss Kelso on January the 7th? As far as that particular date, I'm not for sure. I was definitely with her during that time frame, though. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. You were? Yes. So, Ms. Kelso, you admit that you were also with another man. Yes, Your Honor. It was S Mr. Hafner. Without protection? Yes, Your Honor. And when were you intimate with that man? Around the 15th, when he arrived back in town. Around the 15th of January? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, Mr. Hafner... That's the man you were intimate with on the 15th? Yes, Your Honor. Now, you say your baby was late. Yes, Your Honor. And you were with Mr. Hafner just one week after you were with Mr. Davis? Yes, Your Honor. And your baby was how many days late? Six, Your Honor. <laughs> Six days late. Okay. When the child came late, did you ever think to yourself, maybe it's Mr. Hafner's child, not Mr. Davis? I, I just go by the conception date. And by the way that my son looks, I see it in his skin color. The more I see his skin get darker. But that could also be Mr. Hafner's family because they're half Puerto Rican and they have dark children in their family as well, so... That, that I don't believe that child looks anything like me, Your Honor. You don't see a resemblance at all? I don't see at, at all. But he's also a mixed baby. He's got me in him, too. I have no reason to believe this child okay. is mine. She flat out came out and told but me the child's But if he's there, mine. you know, he's... So why would he be there if he didn't think... So out and say so. the child's not yours? Several times. Several times. She's told me in person the child's not mine. She's told me over Facebook. I have pictures of her telling me on Facebook... I'd like that to she's, see those. ...that she's not... Uh, that I'm not the father. So this is a post from you... Amber Kelso, it reads, my son is not yours. Yes, I told him that because I didn't want him coming back to my house while I was pregnant. He put me through way too much stress, so I just told him the child's not yours to get him away from me. When you tell a man my son is not yours and you don't just tell him, you write it, 
He's likely to believe that. I know, and I wanted him to because I wanted him to stay away from me. So, Ms. Kelso, you say that he hasn't contributed at all to the child-rearing expenses you've incurred thus far. No, he has not. And I have put together a little draft of the expenses that I have had to purchase, things that I've had to buy for my son since I'd like born. to see those. I brought a, a bunch of baby clothes, a bunch of uh, baby blankets. Did you bring the receipts for those purchases? No, I did not. How much did they cost? They were very low cost. I mean, some of them were dollars. I mean, no more than $10 for all of them. So you spent $10 on baby clothes and items for the baby. Ms. Kelso, you handed me a list of the expenses you've incurred thus far. Yes. And this totals $5,122. Yes, Your Honor. That you spent on this baby in nine months. Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Davis, you say you contributed $10 to that. Your Honor, I, I know for a fact at least 10 people that I know personally that, she, that she's had intercourse with. I have no reason to be there for this child. But Mr. Davis fails to explain about the times that I had sex with the people that he knows because none of them were around the area of the conception date, not even months around. So, Mr. Davis, even if she was sleeping with other people, you've admitted in court that she was sleeping with you. She was. So you but... potentially could be this child's father. I could be, but I 100% I, I don't believe I am. She, she's the most promiscuous person that I know by far. She, she's not the you know, first one. She's, yes, first, second, and third place. Your Honor, I stopped being promiscuous when I met Mr. Hafner on November 8th, 2013. That was the exact date. The exact and, date. And that's the day I met him. That's the day that the I started sleeping with him, and that's the day that I started dating him, the day I met his family. They're all here present today. And the only reason that Mr. Davis is in the picture is because I had been cheated on by Mr. Hafner. And so I cheated back with Mr. Davis. I thought you said November 8th, you stopped being promiscuous. <laughs> I'm t I'm t uh. So it was revenge sex. Yes, absolutely. So Mr. Davis, you constantly talk about how promiscuous she is and yet you keep sleeping with her. That's all I was interested in. And were you using protection all these no, times? No, we weren't because she told me that she was medically unable to have children. And in the four months that we were together, she never so much as had a scare with her. And we met, I can count with one hand. I don't even need all five fingers on how many times we've used condoms. And now all of a sudden she's pregnant. Are you and proud of And all of a sudden I'm the father. No. Okay. No, but a month before I got pregnant, I was even reconfirmed that I couldn't have kids because my cervix was too small. And then I pop up pregnant a month later. So it came to as a surprise to me and to everybody that I was pregnant. It was like a miracle baby. It wasn't ever supposed to happen. But you do understand that pregnancy is not the only consequence of unprotected sex. You yes, get I that, know. right? Yes. That there are other serious consequences. Yes, Your Honor. And while I don't condone you sleeping with everyone all over town, Ms. Kelso, what I also don't condone is men standing in my courtroom constantly downgrading women, talking about they sleeping with everybody, and then they sleep with the same woman and don't protect themselves. <laughs> I think I'm ready to hear from Mr. Hafner. Jerome, please escort Mr. Hafner into the courtroom. Mr. Hafter, thank you for joining us today. I have to ask you, do you think baby Connor is your child? That's what I think. You do? Yes, Your Honor. And so, have you done anything for Connor thus far? Have you helped in raising him? Yes, Your Honor. I have been feeding him, being there for him, showing him I love him. What are you holding? Is this evidence you brought to court? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to see what that evidence is. What is this, sir? It's a picture of me and Connor. It is? Yes, Your Honor. So you're presenting this picture to show a resemblance, and is this you when you were a child? Yes, Your Honor. And then baby Connor? Yes, Your Honor. And you believe there is a resemblance? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. When you look at that picture, Mr. Davis, do you see a resemblance? Well, they're twins. <laughs> How am I... I can't... I can't tell them apart. That's his child. How convenient. So... 
after you found out she was pregnant, questioned whether or not you were the father, were you involved in the process? Did you participate in the process? Yeah, I was there all the time. I went no, to choir. He was not. I was there all the time. I went, I was there up until about six months. I went to quite a few doctor's appointments when she asked me to go. I never had an issue with going. He and showed up at my house about four times during my entire pregnancy. Not true. Not Three of them trying to look true. for sex. Not even true. Not even And then the other one was for my mom to take us to Orlando to the appointment that showed the gender of my son, and he just sat there in the chair and looked stupid. Mr. Hafner's family has even been supportive to you. The entire time, since I was pregnant, into the time that I gave birth, the day I gave birth, ever since they have been in my life. Connor sees them regularly, at least three, four times a week. I take She's made zero home. attempts to reach out to me or my family. Through a mutual, through another mutual friend via Facebook, I've seen pictures of her with, uh, with Connor and his family and having just, just around Mr. Hafner's family, that's it. Because you know, leading, leading them to believe, oh, this, does, is, so this is his me. family, you know, this is his child, yet I'm the father. Yeah, you know, yet the child looks just like me. Well, I'm I mean, Ms. Kelso, that is an interesting point. Oh, On I the think... one hand, you're saying he stresses you out and you don't want him to be around. On the other hand, you're accusing him of not helping and not being involved oh, with the no, problem. Oh, no, because he his. told me he wants all or nothing. His words, not mine. So, Ms. Kelso, you have a witness so, that you brought Yes, that I did. This I'd is, like to hear from this her. This is Ms. Hafner, Mr. Hafner's mother. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is hurting me because I believed Connor is ours. He looks like my dad. I have pictures to prove it. I'd to like to see those. To show you he looks just like my dad and I. And I this believe. is really upsetting you. Yeah, I believe he's my grandbaby. And it's important to you. Wow. You don't have to be sorry about being emotional about a child. We understand how important they are. I love them to death. And this is a picture of Connor on the left, and this is a picture of Mr. Hafner's grandfather, which is your father, yes, your Honor. on the right. And you say you truly see a resemblance. Yes, Your Honor. On a scale from one to 10, that's an 11, and you compare our two pictures, and that's maybe a two. Ms. Kelso, I have to say, it's very interesting as I listen to this family testify, this young man says he really thinks this is his child, he wants it to be. You have this entire family that has basically taken you in, accepted your child, loves your child, and yet you're suing Mr. Davis. I want to know who my son's father is. It's just sad that these people who have cared so much that they don't know the truth and we're here to find out the truth because we want to know. my son deserves to have a father in his life, regardless of the financial expenses. He deserves to have somebody who will play with him, he who will take him to the park, that will love who him. will sit there and feed him when he needs food, take care of him, love him unconditionally. That's what my son needs. These are baby pictures of both potential fathers. Connor being in the middle. When you look at these pictures, Ms. Kelso, do you see more of a resemblance between your child and one of these men? His nose looks like Jamal's. His eyes look like mine. His lips look like Richard. His hair looks like Jamal's. I just can't tell. They're so similar in different ways. I, you I are know. truly confused. I am. I can I'm see it on your face. I'm just absolutely confused, and I don't know. You really are confused, and I can see it. I made a mistake by cheating on Mr. Hafner with Mr. Davis. I made that mistake, and I don't know. That's exactly why we're here. For him. And so the truth of the matter is, although you're here suing Mr. <clears throat> Davis for half of the child rearing expenses you've incurred thus far, the truth is, is you don't know who your child's father is. No. I would prefer it to be Richard, but I'm almost certain that it's Mr. Davis's. Well, I wish it was a matter of preference. Are you ready for the results? Absolutely. I cannot rule on your lawsuit until we know if, in fact, Mr. Davis is your child's biological father, because you understand that if he is not, he has no legal obligation to financially support him. Yes, Your Honor. Jerome, I'm ready for the envelope. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Kelso versus Davis, as it pertains to nine-month-old Connor Kelso. As to whether Mr. Hafner or Mr. Davis is the biological father, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Hafner, 
You are not the father. <laughs> Mr. Davis. <laughs> you <laughs> are the father. <laughs> Do you need to sit down, Miss Kelso? You need to sit down. Okay. <laughs> oh, people. It's okay. My son needs a father. Two other kids while I was pregnant. You knocked up two other girls while I was I pregnant. I'm gonna take care of my other two and I'm gonna take care of my third. Regardless how you and I are, it has nothing to do with Connor. Mr. Davis, Ms. Kelso came to court saying that she spent $5,122 thus far in childcare expenses, minus the $10 that you have contributed thus far. So for that reason, my award is for the plaintiff for $2,551. Mr. Davis, Ms. Kelso says during the time she was pregnant, you've also had two other children, is that correct? Yes, I do have two other children. Now you have three children? Yes, Your Honor. How old? Connor's yeah. nine months, Connor, how old the other two? I have a four month old and I have a month old. Come on, man. <laughs> You're just a baby making factory. You're just <laughs> producing people. Ms. Kelso, come stand back over here at this podium, because I'm gonna give you some real tough love. Now, you admit it, you have laid around all over town. This is a lesson for you. I haven't been with anybody since I've last slept with Mr. Davis. Do you have a nerve to get indignant with me when you the one I that had a good myself. family I, and I, a I, good boyfriend? No, hold on. I found no, out no, my wrong a long time that, ago. Stop that drama now. Stop that drama. You turn the table on yourself. Ms. Miller, you are here in hopes to save your family. You say Mr. Brewer's paternity denial of your twins has led you to pack up, move out, and relocate to another state. You have opened this case to prove to the defendant that he is the father and put your family back together. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brewer, you claim Ms. Miller's shady behavior around the time of conception has put you in this precarious situation. You are here to finally get the truth and prove you are justified in your doubt. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Miller, you say your family is on the line. Yes, it is. Explain. Um, Your Honor, I love this man, Sean. And since I had the babies, our relationship has been on the rocks. So I'm just here to prove that the twins are indeed his babies. It's not the twins that were in question. It's just Zara. It's not, the, it's not Zane and Zara. It's just Zara. So there is, you have fraternal twins. Yes. And you say only one child is in question. Yes. And so Zane, you believe, is yours. That's, that's my, that's my twin. He looked just like me. But you don't believe Zara, the girl twin, is yours? No, I do not. So, Ms. Miller, what's the status of your relationship right now? Well, I moved out of state, so I'm in Oklahoma now because the way he treats our babies. What's going on? I can see you are emotional. What's so, going on? So, um, when I first got pregnant with the twins, everything was cool. Sean was there for me. Everything was good. And all of a sudden, he kind of switched up when he seen Zara. It's Zara, she doesn't even really look like me. Mr. Brewer, you, this doubt is eating away at you. Yes. Because you really don't feel like Zara is your biological child. No, I don't, Your Honor. Can you explain to the court why you feel this way? Well, um, partially because Raquel, her, her shady accents is like, um, when we met, well, we met uh, on a cruise and then, you know, we got together. I thought she was, I'm like, oh, she's fine and everything. We got and together. And I didn't want to talk to him first. I gave him the wrong number. Well, we talked, we... <laughs> oh, well, how did you find her if you gave him the wrong he number? He stalked me and he found me. <laughs> I didn't stalk her, Yana. Did she give you the wrong number, she, Mr. Brewer? She did give me the wrong number, but I'm a chef. She was like, well, even if nothing don't happen, you can cook for me. And so, yeah, <laughs> so she, her, she spells her name uniquely different than it, every other So that's account. how you found me. That's on how I found her on Instagram. Oh, got it. And so you slid in her DMs, exactly. as they say? <laughs> exactly. And then slid into her bed. <laughs> well, kind of, not, not so much like that. But one night we had sex, and then uh, it just continued from there. And the second time we had sex, she actually pulled off the condom. He is so lying. I'm, uh, so I'm thinking, like, <laughs> yeah, she, 
So I'm like, um, you know, it was cool then, but then I was like, well, how many other dudes has she did this with? And that wasn't the second time. It probably was, like, the fourth or the fifth time. And then you found out you were pregnant? Yes. So where did all this go wrong, Mr. Brewer? So one night she was drinking heavily and everything, and she told me, oh, I cheated on you with a guy named Jose. I don't know no Jose. And, and she told me... The she only Jose I know is Jose Cuervo. <laughs> I don't know nobody. Well, that must be Zara Cuervo <laughs> then, you know, because... Okay, then. <laughs> yeah. so, so, she told you she cheated on you with a guy named Jose. Yep, so she would go missing for days, come back smelling like black and miles and cologne and stuff like that, and I didn't think that that's what a woman should smell like, you know, every, you guys smell like perfume and lotion and stuff. Sometimes and, I smoke black and miles occasionally. But she didn't do that none of the six months to the year we was together. She, I never had seen her until this, till she came, and then, um, we, we have good privacy in I never looked in her phone. She never looked at my phone. Well, a few months later, she left. We were driving or something, and she had to move the car. So I did look in her phone, and I found penis pictures. Those were old. Oh, like, way before I met him. That that was in October. We had got together in July. July. So, Miss Miller, did you have penis pictures in your phone? I did, but they were like, they were really old. Like he had to go back in the text and look at it, like way back to look at old. No, text. I didn't, Yana. And then, not to mention, um, I'm doing dishes one day, and we're at the house. I'm doing dishes. She comes in, and she's like, "Oh, baby, I'll be back in a couple of hours." You know what I mean? I say, "Okay." So um, the door shut. I go to the window. She's hop she's hopping in the uh, car with another man. I knew it was what? Man. I mean, I seen his hair. What? You know, flat top box. That's he not a woman's hair. He's crazy. He's so delusional. I don't know where he's <laughs> getting this stuff from. So you weren't getting in the car yeah, with another that's man? that's not true at all. That was Jose. No. <laughs> so, Mr. Brewer, how long was she gone with this other man? A few days, like the weekend. She would leave on Lies. Friday, come back, like, on Sunday night, Monday. I don't remember. So, after finding penis pictures in the phone, seeing her get in the car with another man, and her leaving for three days at a time, you said she must be sleeping with somebody else. Yep, and she pops up pregnant. Like, a month later, or five weeks later, she's, oh, I'm pregnant. Now, she's lightly telling me, and then I'm like, oh, she's like, yeah, we got a two-for-one special, a brewer special. And, you know, I felt elated at first, then, I, then the doubt came in my mind, and then all of this, you know, her popping off the rubber and all of this stuff, and Jose and the cars, just... So, Miss Miller, Mr. Brewer said... The little shady ass. Yeah, actions. Mr. Brewer is delusional. Half the stuff he says is not true. It's not? Yeah, it's not true at so all. So who is Jose? I told you, I don't know nobody named Jose. So whose car were you getting in? Why did you leave? I never for got in three days. anyone's car. And that three day story, I don't even know where he got that from. He's not just making all this up. I think he's a little insecure because he's a little older than me, and he just says these out-of-pocket things. How like much that. older is he? Uh, like, 15 years older than me. Oh. Yeah. I look the same age as you, baby. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Brewer? Yes? For you to come up with all of this, you have to really feel doubtful. I do, Your Honor. Yes, I do. Take me to the birth. So, when the twins were born, I was there at the hospital. Like, I've been there during her pregnancy and everything, like, thinking that both of them were mine. Okay. Locked with it. Zara was born first. She was light bright, damn near white. I'm like, that's not my baby. That's she looked Mexican. That's when being weird. She don't look nothing like me. Your Honor, Mr. Black Brewer. people can come in any shade or color. I'm glad you said it, because I say it over and over again right. in this courtroom. Nobody listens to me. <laughs> except Jerome. <laughs> Your Honor... He signed Zane's birth certificate, but didn't sign Zara's. Wow. So this is Zane's birth certificate. And on the second line, that is the acknowledgement of paternity. Exactly. And that's by you, Sean Brewer. Yes, Your Honor. Let's take a look at Zara's. He didn't even sign it. There is no acknowledgement of paternity. No signature. How could you have twins and one of them not be yours? <laughs> well, I can say that that is medically possible. Well, I tell you, Your Honor, uh, I, have, can I, I have some evidence right here. Can I would I like to this? see it. Thank you. This evidence states what, Mr. Brewer? One in 400 twins uh, can be born by paternal. Oh. Double paternity is not uncommon. Medical research over the past 30 years has uncovered that 
super fecundation or double paternity <clears throat> is not as rare as previously thought. It has been suggested that among fraternal twins born in the U.S., one pair of twins in 400 are bipaternal. And I also have something else, Your Honor. All my, my other children, we all, I have a toe. If I may show you an ex exhibit up, up there, uh, I have a toe that kind of curves like a C. Zane and I have it. Zara doesn't. Ooh, you got some toes on you, Zars, Mr. Brewer. <laughs> Zara's feet look like a mine. Can I show you, Your Honor? Now, you know when you're gonna take the picture, you're supposed to lotion up your toe. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Brewer, step over to the uh, monitor and show me what you... Thank you, Your Honor. I hope you didn't come to court with them raggedy feet. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, this is my crusty foot. Yeah. No. <laughs> but as you can see, the toe curves like a C, like, and okay. it, it lays under. Zane's toe is just exactly like mine. It, it kind of, it's not as crusty, but it curves under like that, like Thank that. Thank you, Lord, uh-huh. <laughs> and then Zara's toe, as you can see, goes straight up. That's how I feel, Your Honor. Zara's feet looked exactly like mine, like short and stubby ones. So she looked like me. He looked like him, she looked like me. Jose's baby. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know where you got the name Jose from. Exactly. Because that's what no she told clue. me she cheated. I didn't make it up. I have no she clue. She told where me got she that cheated from. on a guy with Jose, named Jose. And then, I mean, my baby come out looking Latino, so hola. <laughs> so, what kind of relationship do you have with the twins? With the twins, I, I love them both. Well, Your Honor, I can tell you the kind of relationship he has. He, whenever we go out and stuff, when we were together, he would always take pictures with Zane and, like, always hold Zane in a, a bunch of pictures. He rarely take pictures with Zara. And this has upset you so much that you just decided to pack up and leave. You're exactly. a new mother. Or what if she leaving because it's the truth? <laughs> she do? Yeah. Why would I want to come to court then? We're going to find out today. Well, let's find out then. What if you find out, Mr. Brewer, they are your biological children? Yeah. Well, I would def... Well, I know Zane is mine, but I would definitely feel great, more elated if, if Zara, if I knew the whole package was mine, both of the twins. Um, and I'll be prepared to do what it takes to be a father to both of them. And, and then what if one or both are not? If they're not mine, I'll just be heartbroken, devastated. Look how pretty, pretty those babies are. They're so cute. Look, Zane look like me when I'm sleepy. <laughs> Zara look like her when she been drinking Cuervo. <laughs> Leave them babies alone. Right. So the truth is, you really have not accepted Zara. You just don't believe she's yours. I do not believe Zara's my baby. And I can see when you look at your babies, Miss Miller, this bothers you. It does. It bothers me a lot because I feel for them. And they notice when one is being treated a little different from the other one. They can pick up on that. Babies can. Exactly. And so you feel like they've already had that sense that Zara knows that Mr. Brewer holds Zane more. Exactly. And, and this is the kind of situation where it's sad. It really is. It's not... I mean, you know, sometimes in this court when we do just kind of have to make light of <clears throat> difficult situations, we just find the, the laughter when we can because things are so heavy. But the truth is, I mean, you all were in a relationship and you had be two beautiful twins, you thought then you had this doubt, so much so that you're doing research, finding out that there is a more likely chance than we think that twins could be bipaternal. This is a lot, to just have new babies that are just 13 months old. You all should still be in the, in the bliss of everything. Mm -hmm. And you didn't just have one blessing, you had two. Mama, baby, daddy's maybe. But that's only with one baby. But the, the And now, Miss Miller, you're living in separate states. Exactly. This has bothered you so much that now you've packed up and just left. Yep, I've been doing it by myself for like a month now. That can't be easy. It's not easy at all. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I help you. I fly out uh -huh. there too. I flew out there twice already oh. for the birthday in March. He, in yeah, March. he flew out for the birthday just to come to the party and then he left. He didn't help with nothing. I didn't ask her to leave. She left on her own. Well, I wasn't getting no help, so I left. I think, I think the reason why you left is because that baby's not mine, Zara. Well, we're going to find out today. We're going to find out right now.
Jerome, I'm ready for the results. There you go. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Miller versus Brewer, when it comes to 13-month-old Zane Brewer, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Brewer, you are the father. The next result is for Zara. In the case of Miller versus Brewer, when it comes to 13-month-old Zara Brewer, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Brewer, you are the father. told you. Well, I did have my doubts, um, Judge Lake. Um, so why do I see tears in your eyes? Because it's just, it's just emotion. I've been, it's been like, it's been a long time dealing with it. It's been 22 months, you know. But um, I want to say I apologize. And uh, to further my commitment, um, what I would do today is um, ask you, will you marry me? Oh! <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna get you for your engagement gift and your wedding gift. A pedicure, honey. Cause you ain't gonna show up. You ain't gonna show up to that wedding with them feet. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel like this is this can, you know, finally be put to rest because I told him and now he finally believed me because you gave us the answer. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Awesome.